Hello, and welcome back to Where Are All My Friends. I'm so hype on this episode. It is with Sophie, or Silver Sphere, who is a pop artist that I think I genuinely think is going to be the next biggest artist. I'm such a huge fan of her work. I was so hyped that she joined this week for the podcast. It was just a great discussion. We talked a lot about her early influences and what got her to start writing in the first place. We talked about her love for tour and going on an epic tour with Omar Apollo. We talked about her working with one of my favorite producers ever, Dylan Brady. And we talked a lot about what stops people from getting started in the first place? What like maybe where artists would pause or not create things and her remedy for that. So just overall a super rad podcast. I do have to apologize. This one is not on video. Both her and I were in a spot where we couldn't record video and I was just so hyped to have the conversation that I felt it was worth sacrificing. However, if you've been following the YouTube channel, if you've been following the podcast anywhere, and you do enjoy this, if you haven't already, subscribe wherever you do like to listen. That helps me so, so much. Tell your friends all that good stuff. I'm going to leave the intro right there and get right into it. Enjoy. Where are all my friends? We are back again, and this week we are with Sophie or Silver Sphere. And I was saying right before this started, I am legit so hype on this one because there are the times where I'll find an artist and you know, like I'll like an artist, but like, yeah, this is good, this is good. But then I'll have these moments where I'm like a little over the top, where I'm like, this is going to be the biggest artist in the world. And I had that moment. I think I heard football game first, and I was like, I'm sorry, what is this? <laughs> and then like I did a deep dive and I just kept going and I was like, this is crazy. So luckily it worked out. We were able to do a podcast. I'm legitimately like. I'm so appreciative. I'm so honored that you were down to do this. Like legitimately, thank you. I'm so excited for this like this discussion, this conversation. Oh my God. Thank you for that intro. That is the sweetest thing ever. Um, <laughs> I'm really happy to be having this combo. Yeah, I should like practice those for like V maybe I could be like guy that hypes people up before they accept like VMA awards or something like that. <laughs> maybe that's where my career goes. That I think you would be really, really good at that. Tight, tight. <laughs> thank you. Well, what I like to do with this podcast is original. Like, I like to start kind of in your early days of finding music and like how you kind of got to where you're at. However, I don't want to be super redundant with this, and you have kind of talked about that in other interviews. So, just like super briefly, if you don't mind, anybody who hasn't heard of you or doesn't know who you are yet, just who you are, what you do, and like kind of quickly how you got into music. Yeah, um, my name's Sophie. I'm from outside of Boston, Massachusetts. I started making music when I was really young. Like I was just kind of writing my whole childhood, like got a guitar um, and then started releasing music when I was like 16, 17 and somehow fell into an actual career. And I, I don't actually know how that happened really, but uh, somehow it all worked out. Now I make um, pop music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, I, that's a perfect quick explanation. <laughs> and I was, I think one of the things that I'm really, really interested in is if I got it right, you were studying in college when you started releasing music, right? I mean, you were probably releasing music before that, but you stayed releasing music while you were in college, right? Yeah. I mean, that's like also when I started, when I figured out how to get your music on Spotify and stuff before that, it was mostly like SoundCloud and Bandcamp and kind of like more low key. Oh, wow. Okay. Because one, like the first thing that was like really interesting to me was the difference of Sophie and Silver Sphere and you kind of like making your own world as Silver and all of that. And I just find it so interesting that I think a lot of people probably have some amount of like a reservation. Like maybe they know they're good at something. Maybe they know they're passionate about it. But for some reason, it is so vulnerable and scary to put yourself out there, especially when you're just getting started. And I thought that was really cool the way that you kind of just made this alter ego almost of like artist you. So I was really (laughs) curious to hear like that, like your perspective on that and like when that happened. Right. I mean, I also like decided to do that and like create the character around the time when like Marine and the Diamonds was really big or like, you know what I mean? There are kind of these like female pop artists who are like creating these larger than life characters. And there's definitely like comfort in it for me. Like when I was making music in high school, like I it, it was like a 
kind of like a shield so that it didn't 100% have to be like Sophie's feelings coming from Sophie. It could kind of be me like exploring the way I was feeling and kind of like having a be like, no, but it's the character. So I can be extra dramatic Mm -hmm. and I can give this character these like whatever crazy emotions and blah, blah, blah. And like not have to tie it all back to me and how I was feeling. Like, I guess in other people's eyes, like I was just worried about kids from my high school. Like, you know what I mean? So I think that having, yeah, actually. Yeah. (laughs) So having the character was, um, I think helpful for me to just like feel completely free to write about my emotions really without worrying about the same amount of judgment. No, I think that's so cool because I don't know what it is, right? Like when you say it out loud or when you talk about it and you're like, oh, like, I don't know. I just didn't want the kids from high school, whatever you think. And like, that's ridiculous, but it's so real. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the kids from high school or whatever, but it's just like, you could have that one person that you're like, God, they're going to hear this and they're going to make fun of me or they're going to think it's whack. And I hate the idea that like so many incredible artists or people might miss out on doing something they're exceptional at because of that fear. So kind of, I think I was another interview you did when you explained that. I was like, that's fucking cool. And I don't know, maybe I'm like gas, maybe I'm like digging so deep into it. And you're like, I don't know, I named myself Silver or whatever. But like, I just, I really respect that. I thought it was so cool the way that that ended up happening. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like also, I'm glad I did that because now it's like I have more people listening and I have like more people who are emotionally invested in it. And it's, it's nice to have like a teensy bit of separation. Like obviously I'm writing about my personal life and my feelings whatever but people associating it with the character silver spear makes it feel not as like there's not as much pressure so there's just a lot of reasons why i did that and i totally agree like it's tough like when you start putting out music like i remember just like no one was hearing it was getting like a hundred like streams or whatever like but it was still scary because you don't know who's listening and what they're thinking and whatever so yeah i don't know in the long run, I think I'd everyone say, should do it, though. Whatever, like, shield you need, whether it's, like, a character or whatever. Not having your face on the cover, which is, like, something that's a little weird for me or was weird for me at first. Like, ju- I think putting out the music and, like, just doing it and getting over the judgments and the fears is, like, the most important thing someone can do. That was so well said. Like, that's so sick. And I would even say that the early days of, like, when it's only getting 100 plays or whatever is probably the scariest and the worst because you're so vulnerable and then you don't have any of the gratification of being like, oh, look, it worked. It was worth it. It's just like, oh, God, I put myself out there and no one cares. Oh, no, no. (laughs) It's also kind of the same thing as, like, to me playing a small show where everyone's close enough where you can see all their faces and reactions is 10 times harder than playing, like, a 2,000 cap show (laughs) where, like, you can kind of, like, there's so many people that you can't focus on the specific like reactions, you know, oh, it's the same I thing. Think about that. Yeah. I don't That's know if everyone's so like that. For me, it's definitely easier to play a big show than it is to play for 20, 30 people in front of you, you know? Yeah. Cause I, I remember like before I got into any side of like industry side of music, I toured with a band and I was like their tour manager. I sold merch, all that, but I never was on stage. So to me, like we would have those small club shows, but it didn't, I never registered that thought. Like you're saying that and I'm like, oh, that must've sucked for the guys. Oh no. Yeah. And it's not even because you're bummed that it's small. It's like literally just, you can look and gauge every single person in the room's reaction to what you're doing. (laughs) Yeah, like on a very one-on-one level, you're like, oh, crazy. Girl in that hoodie is not about it. She's texting. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, like every person you can be like, this is their real life judge on this right now. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) That's nuts. What, um, because obviously now there's no touring and the project is relatively new, but did you get to do, how much touring did you get to do? I only went on one tour and I'd only played like three shows before that i went on the omar apollo tour and um you toured like, the omar apollo yeah yo it was insane it was like definitely one of the most insane experiences of my life damn because i went from playing like i went from playing like to 30 to 100 people like in small clubs with my friends in new york to playing to almost 2,000 people every night for like two months straight which was <sighs> insane I can't believe I missed that in doing my homework, but I'm actually kind of excited because I'm genuinely that excited right now to hear about that. Yeah, that tour was insane. I mean, it was also dope because like Dijon was on that tour and Alexander 23 was on the other half of the like the tour. And, oh God, it was amazing. 
That's when when was that? What what uh what time frame was that? That was like November and December of 2019. Oh wow. So like relatively recent and kind of like right before yeah. any pandemic stuff. Like right before. I mean, like what mid March is like when this all started. So yeah. it was like two and a half months after I got back from tour. So does that leave you now like itching to get back out? Because I know certain people are more about like, I'd rather be home writing. I'd rather just put music out. And certain people just always want to be on the road. What's your vibe on that? I fucking loved being on the road. Like, and I definitely like, even in like social situations, get my energy from other people. So that was like the, like, you're so tired, like you're getting no sleep. But that was the most energetic I had ever been because I was just like getting all this energy from people like every night. I'm, like, dying to go back out. Also, like, I've grown a lot in that time, and, like, I have never played a headline show in my life. So it's like I'm ready to do that now, you know? Oh, my. What a crazy cool spot to be, like, weird spot to be. But I also, I really feel that. And I'm the same way, too. Like, again, I never, I've never played on stage, but just being on tour in those days, like, it's magic. Like you, you see all these new cities. Every day is different. You're making these friends. It just feels like a traveling summer camp. Yeah. I mean, it was dope. And like, I was, we did like a van, like I was driving. It was like very low key. Um, but it was so fucking fun. Like, like I wouldn't trade it for the world. I wouldn't trade it for a tour bus. I wouldn't trade it for like nice hotels, like being, in those like gross hotels and like waking up at 6 a.m. and having to drive the van was like, I'd do it all over again. Honestly, so much respect there because again, me coming back to genuinely believing you are going to be a massive pop artist, like the fact that you get to always be like, yeah, no, like I did my van tour. I drove the van. I did all of it. Like (laughs) I feel like that's part of earning it, right? I agree. I mean, I also think it's like, especially if you're going to like end up having other acts on tour and stuff and they're going to be doing that i think it's just good to have some sympathy know what it's like (laughs) like totally because then when you're the headliner you know how to take care of them and you understand that like sharing your green room shower means the world to them and all those little things (laughs) yeah totally yeah damn that's cool what uh like did you as you were the artist and you were just writing your own songs before you ever toured anything like that like what what were you inspired by like what artists did you find that you really connected to early i mean taylor swift was like from the age of eight on like really yeah one of my biggest inspos which is funny because my mom like hates country music (laughs) and so i was sitting around being like i was riding shotgun with my hair and my mom was like oh god (laughs) really yeah but uh she gave in and i like you know would go to the taylor swift concerts and whatever but (laughs) what's your favorite t swift album Oh, that is so impossible. Like, I don't. <laughs> it's impossible Check me out. for me. 1989. Well, yeah. I mean, there's just different categories. Like, I consider that like the beginning of her new era, right? So I would say, I, think that's, yeah, that's I would fair. say, Red probably is like one of my favorites from before the new era. 1989 is obviously just like a legendary album. Yeah. Best pop album ever. In my opinion. It's funny for me because I, as much as I'm involved in music and love it, I have no musical talent and relatively <laughs> low understanding of like technical production elements. But when I listened to 1989, like even the beginning, like Welcome to New York, like, the little synth noises and like every bass line, it sounds perfect. Like yeah. it sounds so technically perfect. And I'm just like, yes. Well, that's like honestly not knowing all the technical stuff I think is like better if you're like in the music industry like obviously like I need to know some stuff and I need to know how to ask for a certain sound or whatever but I like try not to get too like in my head about doing like things the right way or like the technical way or whatever so like I actually think it's kind of dope that you don't like focus too much on like the specifics of like how it all works because that's the magic of music you know what I mean it's like just being able to hear it and feel it That's how I feel. And I feel like that's, if you can listen to a song and be, I don't want to say like fully uneducated, but if you can like keep it simple and just be like, is this a bop or not? Like, is it good or not? Like that's how many people in the world are listening to music that don't have any technical explanation. They just turn the radio on and they want to hear a good song. So like, 
And I think that when you become too precious and too like, uh, it's probably like being a snob isn't the right word, but like when you become too technical, then you're probably overthinking it as an yeah. artist where I have so many friends that have started on SoundCloud and just started like producing from a laptop being like, this sounds cool. I'm going to put it out. Like, and look yeah. where it goes. Totally. I mean, the thing is it works for a lot, like a, for a lot of people, it does work like to know a lot about music theory and like every single, like a, about sine waves and blah, 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 or whatever it is, you know what I mean? But like know how to describe what's happening scientifically. Like when you make this certain sound, like a lot of people do really well with that. I think that my brain is kind of a little more like works better when it's scattered <laughs> almost, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I do better, like throwing shit at the wall and seeing what, sticks than I do like choosing which shit to throw at the wall <laughs> you know what I mean totally do you start with a beat or like do you start with a track and then do something over it or will you start with like a melody or have something like that I mean it depends like when I started and I still sometimes do this like I'll write a full song like just with guitar or piano or like whatever I'll put a few chords into logic um I love doing it that way and then producing around it but also like during quarantine I've gotten a lot less precious about my process because really the only way to get stuff produced is to get beats sent to you and write over yeah. them so it's been like a really good exercise for me because i definitely was like quite precious about my process before this and i oh whoa. and i've opened up to like a lot of different ways so now it's like a mixture like I'm, I'm always like writing down lyrics and stuff on my phone or like getting voice memos but for the most part, I'm like trying to be more collaborative and like start from scratch in the room as opposed to like bringing a full song in and having someone work around it. Damn, that's sick. Like in real time as we're talking, I'm kind of thinking about how interesting it is to be at your stage of an artist project during like the weirdest years ever. Cause it's like, you had a taste of tour, you know, it's amazing. You, you would want to get out so bad again. Yeah. You had a process for writing but then that got shook up. So like with you learning to adapt in all of this, I feel like it's game over when things get back to normal. Because it'll be <laughs> like, yeah, cool, try it's me. Gonna be We're good. It's going to be crazy. I'm going to have every That's single sick. every single thing figured out. I mean, I also signed my record deal during the pandemic. So Holy. it's like usually you would go in and like you would sign your paper. It would be a big thing. Like you'd probably go out and celebrate whatever. I was at my parents' house in Newburyport, Massachusetts. <laughs> signing a docu-sign and like maybe having a glass of wine with my mom you know what I mean it's just like such a difference That's whatever crazy. they usually would start sending you on promo tours and blah 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 and it's just like so interesting it's been such a different experience than what it would normally be to sign to a major label yeah you signed to RCA yeah 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 damn how's that been like I know a lot of people always talk about like oh stay indie for as long as you can blah 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 but like how's your experience been like again new you're signing in the middle of quarantine but what's it been like yeah i mean it's been really nice like it it's nice to have a support system like that like you know what i mean kind of know that you have people yeah. like backing you up like i got creative directors through rca who can who help me like film all my videos in quarantine which i would have had no idea how to do otherwise like it's just like a lot of support at the same time it's like i feel like a lot of the things that the label would normally do like aren't happening right now so it's very interesting um, yeah, yeah I mean, it's, gotta, it's like a challenge on both sides. Huh? Yeah. Like they're like, oh, cool. They're like, trying we, to figure it out. We too. are limited in what, yeah. I mean, I put out all my boyfriends in the pandemic, so they did a great job with that one. You know what I mean? Like I put, I put out my first project with them, so it's been, it's yeah. been dope. And like, it's it. That's also something that's pushing me. It's like having a lot of people's opinions. Um, I'm pretty stubborn and, like I was saying, precious about my music and what I want to do, and it's actually. I was like pushing back a little bit at first, but it's like, so I think I'm, I'm growing a lot and just like learning to take constructive criticism and trust the people around me. Cause I've built a team of people who, whose opinions I trust, you know what I mean? And yeah. it's just a matter of taking it in and really using that to my advantage. You know, I always think about that. Like I, I, I think labels get such a negative connotation or like you get like this stigma of like, oh, they're going to make you change everything. And it's like, if you sign to the right label and you work with the right people, they're passionate. Like they just want to help blow you up. They want to be a resource. They want to help you. Yeah. So it's like, I think that's rad that you'll push back and you'll be like, no, you don't understand. Like this means a lot to me, this, this, and this. But then you're also keeping an open mind and you're like, okay, cool. If five people said like, oh, maybe I should tweak this. Like 
they've been in it for a while. Maybe I should look yeah. at that. Like, I think it's a give and a take, but if you have the right team, like you can, you can do crazy cool stuff with the help of a label. I mean, it's also like easy to take it for granted that I'm, you know what I mean? Like I signed and then kind of went on with my life, kept making my music, but it's easy to start taking for granted that you have like really talented people with like really amazing, like histories in music and developing artists, like around you wanting to give you their opinion, whether or not you end up taking it. Like, I feel like I'm kind of just learning how to like, how to balance the taking it without letting it change my opinion. You know what I mean? Which is like an interesting thing, but um, yeah, for the most part, it's been like amazing and I'm, I love them and I'm super, super excited to keep releasing music with them. That's sick. Two things that I wanted to ask you about on that side was one, we kind of touched on it, Dylan Brady football game. I just, I'm a huge fan of what he does and hearing you work with him, like he has a very unique sound to his production. Yeah. So like hearing your voice on that, I was like, yeah, so sick. Like it was perfect. Um, are you, are you close with him? Or are you going to do anything else with him? Or was that just a track for fun? No. Yeah. I mean, I love working with him and it's actually funny because, um, we've been working together since I was in college. Like I was kind of in the no scene. No shit. In, yeah. I was in the scene in Chicago with Laura Les from a hundred Gex, like kind of like playing the same basement shows, whatever. And so he got on my radar and that's kind of like when I started coming to LA doing sessions. So I was like, Hey, any way I could work with Dylan Brady and we've just been making like tracks since then. And football game that... is like old, like football game is from probably 2018, 2019, like early 2019. Oh, yeah so it was super fun to see to see them blow up and like have all that happen because i like knew all along i mean that scene is just like so cool that that kind of music like i just knew it was next up it's so sick i feel like you hear like the hyper pop playlist on spotify and it might as well just be like people inspired by dylan brady or tracks dylan brady has produced it's true he really has changed the changed the course of music in my opinion i facts yes agreed Um, And then you also have something coming up. You're dropping another song. It's just a song in February. Yeah. Is it more than a song? It's a song. It's a song. It's not like you primarily just only work with Dylan Brady. This is just me as a fan of Dylan Brady bringing him up. But that's (laughs) that's uh, that one is not him, right? That's you and yeah, that's me and a few other producers. But I have so much music with Dylan. Like we have probably like an album's worth of like half finished songs. We just need to like get in the studio when we can, obviously, and finish. Like it's insane. But working with him, he also is like just a sick pop producer like if you want him to go like a little less hyper pop like we have some songs that like straight up sound like selena gomez you know what i mean like it's crazy i feel like him and lil aaron are two like so like they're so good at doing everything mm-hmm. that it's just nuts and again it's like i'm nuts. not i'm not an artist like i don't super know but just my outside ear like i'll hear the things they do and i'm like oh cool yeah no i, I think that i'm I think like hyper pop and all of that is like super next up. And obviously they both like were a big part of the beginning of that. But a thing that I think is cool about you is I really do. Again, here I am saying you're going to be the next biggest artist (laughs) in pop, but it's like, I just feel like your vision. I watch your videos. I listen to the music, all of the different like ghosts. That song was fucking crazy. Like, thank you. It just, it feels like you're bigger than a genre. So that's where I'm like really excited to see what happens next and hear the next song you release and hear the album and all of that. Like, I I feel like you as an artist, you're not limited to anything. And that to me is like, what? Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Like, that is a big thing for me, like not wanting to just get comfortable in one box. Because I feel like the 1975 was like one of my favorite bands, Um, like being a teenager, like up until now. And just like... Mm -hmm never knowing what to expect but like hearing the same emotion and the same voice and the same whatever like outlooks on things but like over different production and like using different styles and just like exploring it in different ways i think it's like super inspiring to me so they're definitely like a big reason that i try to a little bit of everything you know you could not have said that better and even going back to taylor swift i feel like she's done an incredible job of that yeah. It doesn't matter what style music she's writing. You're always going to know it's Taylor Swift. Like it's always going to feel similar yet with her being able to like grow on that in whatever way she wants. Yeah. I mean, another thing that I always say, like when I'm in a room, like with a producer trying to figure out a track or whatever, or, like writing a song, I always am like, would this song be good just like on piano and voice or like guitar and voice? Like, and if it is, then we can do anything with the production 
we could go we could make a metal song out of it you know what i mean and it's still gonna it's still gonna be like a good song you know so i feel like it definitely comes back to like i'm very committed to making sure that like just the the songwriting itself is like representative of me enough that i can do anything with the production it'll still feel like me and like my fans will be hearing my voice and stuff you know damn it that's cool that's like (laughs) it just feels like you're a real artist like that's like caring about the art of it so respect nothing but respect there thanks i appreciate it so a question then that i have is like If you're listening to this podcast and you relate to being that artist and having that vision that you do, maybe you're a little bit reserved, maybe you're not, whatever. Maybe you're going to college for something that you could do or I don't know, like just what's your advice maybe putting yourself back in the shoes of you like right before it started popping or somebody that's at that spot. Like what do you tell that version of you to keep going or what do you tell somebody else that's there? I mean, honestly, like just releasing music because I had like a bunch of friends who were are amazing musicians who just like wanted to wait till they had the perfect song or the perfect album or whatever. Or they're like, oh, well, I'm in college, so I have all this time, like, and I can just like really, really work and then start releasing. I think like my biggest advice is just like release something, and if you hate it in a year, you can take it down. Or you can just keep releasing because you're just going to keep making better and better stuff. And it's just going to keep, you know what I mean? Like, but if you don't release it, your career won't start. You know what I mean? Or like the foundations of a career won't start until you start releasing. So like release independently, release on SoundCloud, make your own like music videos, whatever it is, like just like getting it out there and also trying not to worry too much about the reaction it's getting. You know what I mean? I love that. Like, I I think that it becomes so easy to make everything so precious and to almost like be your own hardest critic before you even give it a chance. Yeah. And I've seen it now, like having so many friends that'll drop the song that they recorded in their closet. They're like, this was a throwaway, but whatever. And sometimes that blows up to be the biggest one, whatever. Yeah. And then from there, even if you even if it gets popular and like as an artist, you're like, oh, I don't love it. I wish other people, like it still gave you the platform that other people are paying attention to you now where then you can release even more that you love. I mean, even like the first times I was releasing music, like literally never got more than like a thousand streams or whatever, like on Bandcamp or SoundCloud or whatever it was. But just like getting comfortable with the process of releasing something and like putting it out into the world without the pressure, you know what I mean? It's like, then I had drinking games which I knew was like going to be pretty, I had a feeling it was going to be big. So I had the prior understanding of what it feels like to put something really meaningful out. And there wasn't the pressure of like knowing like, oh, this is the one that I really want to work. You know what I mean? Just like getting in the habit of like putting it out and like just getting used to the feeling. I don't know how to explain that really. I think you did a great job. Like, I feel that. That's cool. And I think that's kind of applicable to things outside of music too, you know? Like, there was a time where I was terrified to put a podcast out because there's so many other shows that are like, in my opinion, so much better or whatever. And I'm like, why should I even start? But then you start doing it and you start having fun with it and people like, I don't know, your perspective or whatever. And you kind of learn, you're like, oh, cool. Like, I'm having fun with it and some people like it and that's all you need. Yeah. Well, and I'm sure that like, actually, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I would assume that the first few, the first few podcasts you put out, you probably listen back and you're like, oh, I was like, not as well spoken as I am now. I wasn't as natural as I am now. And it's like, but you had to put those ones out to get to a place where you were. Painfully embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah. Same with my first music. I was making like horrible synth pop with like spoken word over it. It was like really just not the vibe. (laughs) But I had to do that and get it out to get to here. To get to you. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. totally. And now here you are with attention on you and you feel so comfortable and you're just like doing it and you're in your flow. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're you're totally right. And I listened to something like on the podcast side of inspiration, one of my favorite shows like if they did like a call-in episode and a kid kind of asked, they're like, oh, I want to get started. I'm not sure, blah, blah, blah. I'm afraid. And they were basically like, you have to put out 52 episodes, like an episode a week for a year before you can even expect one person to care. And I heard that and I was like, oh. And it kind of, it was a little defeating, but it was also a little encouraging where it's like, I'm going to put this out no fail. Like I gave myself a challenge where I was like, I'm going to do a year of this. And if not a single person cares, whatever. But I didn't expect anything for an entire year. 
and I think even having ex- expectation at a year is wrong. Like just put it out because you love it, but yeah. kind of just being okay with putting stuff out and not caring what happens from there, just getting comfortable with it. I, I love that perspective. I wish more people had that view. Yeah, I guess that that is like my biggest advice because that's like the one thing that I think really made it work for me, to be honest. Damn. Yeah. That's so sick. <laughs> damn. Well, I think we did the thing. I really, we really did the appreciate thing, you. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, where, where can everybody find you if they're listening now and they hadn't heard you? Yeah. I mean, it's Silver Sphere, two words on Spotify. Um, my Instagram is silver.sphere, Twitter, the Silver Sphere. Wish I could just get the Silver Sphere on everything, but apparently someone else had that idea before me. So. <laughs> It's always too, it's like, it's like the most random accounts where it's like aerial photos of the world or planets that are silver and they have, yeah. And you're like, yo, could I, could I I chase my dreams with this account? And then it's just nobody responding. Yeah. But now I'm kind of screwed because if I ever do get it, uh, it gets rid of your verification. So you have to like redo the whole verification like process if you change your username, whatever. So I think I'm sticking with these. But uh, yeah, that's where you can find me. I Um, think you'll be all right. I think I'll be fine. (laughs) I'm putting um, a song out February. So keep an eye out. Yeah. That's about it. Tight. (laughs) That's awesome. Well, seriously, thank you again. Like, it's such an honor to talk to you right now. It's so cool to hear, like, I don't know, like, legitimately, I would consider myself just a fan of what you're doing. So to have this conversation and to understand you on a level of just a person, like, to hear that your views are this cool and, that, like, this is the person behind the artist project is really fucking cool to me. So thank you for taking the time and thank you for being so rad. Thank you for having me and for uh, being so interested in... uh the nuances of my brain. <laughs> of my brain. 